So thanks everyone for coming along tonight. Um, the first, the first port of call for the presentation here is why, I, just a quick snap as to why uh, you should have some exposure to copper. So copper is the largest of the base metals markets globally. It's a 22 million tonne per annum market. It traditionally grows at 3 to 4%, which if you just run those numbers pretty simplistically, it means you need around six to 700,000 tonnes of new copper per annum just to keep up with, with um, demand. So it's a very big market, six to 700,000 tonnes of copper. For those who don't understand what that means, means one of the largest copper mines in the world every year needs to be found and developed and brought into production to meet the, the um, demand growth. Even you know, at a slower growth rate of two to three percent, you can run those numbers. Uh, it's, it's a very large demand equation. What drives that? Copper um, is, it has a multitude of uses, um, wire pipe, um, tube. Uh, if you think air conditioners, refrigerators, um, your wires, all industrial applications. So if you just push that out globally, you've got very large scale urbanisation happening across the planet. Uh, copper um, is in demand um, throughout that urbanisation in developing countries. Uh, on top of that, you overlay uh, the new technologies which we're seeing everywhere. So just a quick snapshot there. So a car in the 70s versus a new uh, electric car today, a Tesla in this case, you've got uh, four times as much copper in those cars. Uh, you take a coal-fired power station uh, and compare it to a uh, solar array and you've got approximately five times the amount of copper there. So you see the same thing, whether it's wind turbines, hybrid cars are about 45 uh, <coughs> kilos. So there's a, there's a large demand and growing demand for copper. Um, the copper price, every, quite a few people have asked me this week as to you know, well, what's happening with the price. I think the price is behaving exactly as we would have anticipated it to behave. If we look here, um, we're around about here this year, there was a large surplus forecast in the market. So this means the market's in balance. Anything above means that there's excess copper in the market. Below, there's not enough copper to meet demand. So we're into a period here where the market's pretty much in balance uh, or is in surplus. So the price is actually dropping down. We're currently at around about $2.10 per pound. As we move later on into 2017, 18, uh, onwards, you see the market turns into deficit so, and very deep deficits in the market. So that will drive um, increased prices in copper and I think just keep that in mind, it's very important in respect of the timing for Asia Met's copper projects to come on stream. So, uh, so that's, that's why copper. Now, you know, about the company, uh, so, you know, why should you invest in, in the company? So Asia Met, I'm going to talk you through the quality assets that we have in copper. We've got a, an immediate uh, near-term development opportunity, uh, which is small to medium scale, coupled with a very large growth option longer term. We've got a team with a proven track record. So that track record is uh, essentially myself. I've been involved in five mine builds uh, over the past 15 years. Uh, a lot of those builds have been in the Asia Pacific region in, and Australia. I've uh, got a very, very long-term experience in Indonesia, more than around 20 years of experience uh, working in country. Um, so we've sort of got the background. It's, it's, this is not new to us, exploration, development and taking uh, assets into production in copper and gold in that region. So it's all familiar territory. We've done all this before multiple times. So what does that lead to? Really, um, it's a strong story uh, in the copper space. Uh, we've expanded um, the knowledge of the company in the market uh, and we've had a very strong news flow and we'll continue to have strong news flow as we go forward uh, as these projects are developed and taken uh, along the development curve uh, over the next couple of years. So um, I've just... I mentioned a bit of the background there, so uh, uh, myself there, so my career is pretty straightforward. I'm, half my career has been with Rio Tinto across a whole range of different areas and then in, in as an as a entrepreneur exploring, developing and operating assets 
uh, over the past few years. Steve Hughes is in the audience uh, as our uh, runs the operations on the ground, and then the board here. Just in terms of the the shareholder base, so we've we've got um, some large uh, ultra high net worth and high net worth investors uh, who are the key supporters of the company, and we've just uh, those those you know they they are investors who are are currently investing into the company uh, at the low part of the cycle, really, to cap cap capture the upswing uh, through this development curve uh, and the upswing that we anticipate as uh, commodities recover going forward. So just a little snapshot on Indonesia. Indonesia is a mining country. 12% of GDP uh, is mining. It's a very large producer of a whole uh, range of different commodities. Uh, it's got, um, you know, long-term uh, track record, the 60 year mining history in country. Some of the biggest companies uh, in the world operate there and then there's a group of smaller companies who have successfully developed and operated in country and continue to do so. So it's a very prospective country. Uh, it's, it's a safe and secure domain and it's an area, as I said, where we've been operating for 20 years very successfully uh, and are very comfortable uh, operating there. So the projects, uh, we've got essentially two core copper projects. So there's the KSK, which I'll spend most of the time on tonight. It's a copper project lo located in Kalimantan, Indonesia, so central Kalimantan here. There's a large growth option, as I said, in copper called Butong, up here in the north end of Sumatra Island in Aceh. And then we have a gold project in the middle here called July. So just a quick snapshot of those assets. So here... This is the, the Kalimantan asset called KSK. Uh, we have um, resources which are proven to indicate an inferred status, um, and we're currently taking those, that, um, those resources um, through the scoping study stage or the PEA stage at the moment. So that's mining studies, metallurgical test work, uh, all the infrastructure inputs. And all that will come together at the end of the first quarter in 2016, and that's the point where up to this point, all the news flow for the company has really been around technical matters. At that point in time, we'll actually have an economic analysis done and we'll have the financial parameters around uh, this particular project. And I think that's a very major milestone for the company. It's, it's the point where larger, uh, sophisticated, more sophisticated and institutional investors will, will start to take a look at this and certainly that's you know, in the last week that I've actually been here in London, uh, that's a very clear message that I'm getting back. That's the point where, um, you know, those, those larger investors are looking to, you know, seriously look at uh, coming on, on board on the company. We have other opportunities on the property which are very attractive in their own right. You could float a, another company around these assets, but at the moment they, they are things which are, we've put on the back burner and we'll come back to um, later in life. Uh, when we've got some cash flow coming through from the development of this asset. Down here is just a summary of the large growth option at uh, Butong. It's a very large deposit. Uh, it's a very attractive project in its own right, but it's a large capital, large growth option. And in the current market, uh, it's, it's not something that we're focused on. We're de-risking it gradually, uh, converting our licence from an expiration licence to a production licence and doing low-key, low-cost de-risking of the project, but it's not the core focus for us right now. So just honing in uh, on the, uh, this Kalimantan KSK project, so just a quick snapshot. So Palankaraya is the regional centre, uh, <coughs> regional capital of central Kalimantan, so you've got, you know, 4737 flights a day from Jakarta into Palanka. We then have a dual carriage bitumen road uh, all the way out to here, and then this link road into right into the project area, which is actually shown here. It's a sheeted all-weather road. Um, we've got semi-trailers coming in and out here daily, carrying 40-ton loads of logs. Uh, so you know the access into this area historically has actually been quite a difficult area to access, but nowadays palm oil, rubber, coal, timber, uh, the access is is opened up, and it's. Uh, you know, it's very good access in and out of the site. Um, as I say, we've, within three hours of the site, we've got Barge Nav Navigable River here. So this actually runs all the way down to the coastline to the deep water port of Bunjamison. 
or alternatively there's actually a road, a bitumen road, which runs down to the port of Banjamycin as well. So the logistics are, are, you know, are actually very good for a project like this. So just honing in on the project a little bit more and what we've been doing this year uh, and the status, uh, the current status of the project. So this is a nine by nine square kilometre area, which has the been the main focus for us this year. We've been drilling out this area here called BKM. Sorry, this is, um, this is soil, this is copper in the soil, the, the colours underneath, uh, the reds and magentas being the highest colours. Uh, this is, as I say, nine by nine square kilometres. So this core area in here, this year we've drilled six and a half thousand metres and around 70 holes into this area. And we've proven up uh, some resources to, you know, quite a high level of confidence uh, in the indicated category and the inferred category here. So 65 million tonnes in total at around 0.65% um, there. The main minerals are leachable, that means you can easily um, treat those. Uh, the copper comes out into solution uh, very readily. The, the deposit's very shallow. We've got two other areas here which you can see look very similar to this area and have had very few drill holes into them. So while we're currently at 65 million tonnes, over time we see that we can convert additional resources here and here and eventually we would anticipate having somewhere in the order of 80, 80 to 100 million tonnes of material to process through uh, any mine development that, that uh, you know, we're looking at um, getting into production here. As I say, some very good results from recent drilling down here. We've just put five holes in there, really just to test the potential, and we've had some excellent results from that. So very confident that we'll get those additional resources there. Now, what does all this mean? Um, if you look at a, a few core characteristics, I'm just going to jump forward one more. These uh, resources, copper resources, are very shallow. You can see here they're very close to surface, so anything in the, these holes which is red and yellow and blue is copper in the drill holes. It's all within 50, kilom uh, 50, kilom 50 metres of surface. Um, very, very shallow, so that translates into very simple, very low cost mining with a very low strip ratio. Which strip ratio meaning that for every one tonne of ore which gets processed through the plant, we have one tonne of waste, which is, is a very low number. Most mines would be operating at three to four to one, uh, and gold mines can be running at anywhere from seven to twelve to 14 to 1. So that translates into low cost mining, simple low cost mining. Um, we also, um, if we go back to here, within the deposit we've got some core areas where we've got 12 to 15 million tonnes of better than 1% copper, so higher grade than our overall resource. What does that mean? It means that you can mine those early in the life of the project to generate greater cash flow when you're paying back the capital that you've invested to get into production. So these are very important things from an economic perspective to maximise the value and the cash flow of the assets. Um, as I said, we've been doing a whole lot of work to um, get the, the copper out of the rocks. Uh, it, a very simple heap leach SXEW is what we're looking at. So. Put, it, put the copper on a heap, aerate it, um, put the solution through the heap and the copper gets into solution, comes out the bottom, then you use electrolysis to uh, get the copper out into pure copper, copper cathode 99.999, which is LME grade <coughs> copper. And that copper obviously is a lot lower bulk than producing a concentrate and we would anticipate that most if not all of that copper actually would be consumed in country. There's quite a lot of copper consumed as rod wire and tube, the rod wire and tube mills in Indonesia would take that. So we've done the stage one work. We get 95% of copper into solution. Uh, it, it looks you know, very good in terms of their competent rocks. They stack well, they percolate well, uh, and they don't use, they use very little in the way of acid. Uh, consumption. So all these things translate effectively into a much lower lower cost. 
so we're looking at, in the PEA, we're looking at a project producing 20 to 25,000 tonnes of copper cathode per year. Um, we would expect that to have a capital cost somewhere in the order of $150 million for that scale um, and producing copper <coughs> somewhere in the order of a $1.30 to $1.40 C1 cost. So a very competitive project on, on all of those metrics, but the PEA uh, that we're doing at the moment will um, really, uh, I guess, detail uh, all of those characteristics of, of the, the project. So, you know, this is really just the timeline. Uh, all of those things that I've just been talking through have happened uh, in the first um, 12 months. So we're, we're about here now. Um, as I say, we've updated the resource this year, 50% increase in the size, 30% increase in the confidence. We've done that stage one uh, MET test work. We're into stage two now, and the PEA is underway. So we've appointed all the consultants, uh, and, and work is, is, is up and running uh, in respect of the mining studies, the infrastructure studies, the engineering studies, process plant design, uh, and as I said, the economic analysis, which will all come together into the PEA, which will come out uh, at the end of the first quarter next year. So it's a very important milestone for the company. At that point in time, we'll look to move uh, straight into the feasibility study and then take the project through feasibility study uh, and into production as quick as we possibly can. <coughs> Expect the feasibility study to take approximately 12 months. So in terms of funding, we're fully funded to get through to this point, the commencement of the bankable feasibility study. And we have a number of initiatives ongoing to fund the, the bankable feasibility study. The gold project that I alluded to earlier, we assess as being a non-core asset for the company. Uh, it really doesn't have the scale to be a company maker, uh, as I've uh, just sort of outlined here. We've got a very attractive near-term development opportunity at the, at the, um, on the KSK property, and we have a big growth option in copper at Butong. So we're looking to divest of the copper asset, and we expect that that would uh, return into the company somewhere in the order of one and a half to two million dollars, uh, which will be put towards the, the bankable feasibility study. And we also have interest in uh, a project level investment uh, in the company. So we, we anticipate to be in pretty good shape to, to take the project through the BFS stage um, over the next 18 months or so. So I did mention uh, else, so that what, mostly what I've been talking about tonight is here at the Burren Cannon uh, project. Uh, it's a big area that we hold there in Kalamantan. There's a whole range of different prospects on there. As I said, any, you, know, you could float a company on the other, some of the other prospects that sit on the tenement. Uh, these have been drilled uh, over a number of years. This project's actually about 25 years old. There's been a few holes put into these things and never really followed up. There's some sensational uh, grades and strike length just sitting there, but you know, you, it's, it's one thing at a time for us. So we're really focused on getting into production and then we'll come back and start to you know, prove up some of these other opportunities. We expect that there's another, you know, there's another deposit or two sitting uh, in these, these uh, prospects that we've just... Uh, are highlighted by, the, by these initial drill results. They're very, very exciting numbers by anybody's measure. The big project is called Butong. It's a big, very big copper gold deposit. It's over 500 million tonnes now at around 0.6% copper. It's probably grown to 750 million tonnes or bigger. It's a very large deposit. It's got some exceptionally good grades from very close to surface, two, three metres down. Central core, which is uh, much higher grade, it's probably 150 to somewhere in the order of 150 to 200 million tonnes of uh, 0.8 to 0.9% copper. Very good grade by any measures in a big deposit. It's, uh, there's, there's additional areas around it where there's very high grade copper which haven't been drilled to date. So it's a very exciting project in its own right and over, you know, before this sort of serious downturn in the market we've had a number of large other major companies quite interested in farming into this property. So the intention for us with this is that, as I alluded to earlier, we de-risk it, 
uh, by converting the licence into a long-term production licence, which gives us 25 plus years of tenure. And then we'll look to partner on this project uh, with another group to fund it through the feasibility study. The feasibility study on this, this project uh, is, is quite an extensive, uh, large feasibility. Um, one of the real key advantages of the Butong project is its location. It's, it's 60 kilometres from the coast. There's very few large copper projects in the world that are as well located as this. And the big capital that's involved in the development is a lot of it's associated with really the infrastructure. So the, the project's you know, 60 kilometres from the coast, you've got a commercial airport here, you've got a new 220 megawatt power station here and a port. Uh, so, you know, you're only about 50 kilometres in a straight line from those. So a very significant advantage for, for that project, having that uh, infrastructure nearby. It's on the side of a main road. So it's, um, you know, very attractive in its own right, but it's a large project uh, and it's going to take uh, quite a lot of time to get into into production, so it's uh, one that we'll look to partner uh, as we move forward. I just mentioned the gold project, it's actually a very attractive gold project in its own right also, but you know, we believe that it's, you know, it's got good potential for sort of around 250 to 300,000 ounces of gold at good grade, and an, there is a sub-market in Indonesia for local players who are interested in this type of thing, and we've currently you know, got uh, a couple of those engaged. And we, we'll, we look forward to reporting over the next few months uh, a deal to, uh, to sell that project. So just in a nutshell here, there's, there's a lot of text here and I won't say too much about it, but generally uh, we took over running the company. So the company was formerly called Kalimantan Gold around uh, 12 months ago. We've reinvigorated it, new management. We've sorted out the tenure. It's actually on a sixth generation contract to work this project. It's got 30 years of tenure in front of it. Uh, it's the best form of title in country. Uh, it's, it's actually, um, it, it's a contract with the government. It, we've got it, uh, the forestry permits for the next two years of work. Uh, we've done a lot of drilling this year, uh, upgraded the resources as I said. Doing the test work, moving it through, so we've had a very strong news flow uh, and I had a good response and the project's, you know, really developed well over the past 12 months. Again, you know, what is the news going forward? So some key milestones there, the metallurgical test work, the mining studies, all the inputs into the prelim preliminary economic assessment and the delivery of that and the financials and the economic analysis, as I said, at the end of the first quarter and then driving the project uh, through the feasibility <coughs> study. So look, what are we trying to do here? And, you know, I guess having been involved in doing this a number of times, so the previous, previous company that I was involved with, Oxiana Limited, grew from a market cap of $3 million to a market cap of $6 billion over an eight-year period. You know, we, it did that by taking projects from exploration through development and into operations. And... You know, we have the team in place to do that. So we're looking to drive, you know, take Asia Met from evaluation, which is, I would consider to be quite ridiculous at the current time, but that's the market that we're in. And move it up the curve through the studies period, into the development period, and as a producer. So if you look at the companies there, Finders Resources is in Indonesia. It's developing a very similar project to the, K the KSK project we've got. It's a very well valued project. Central Asia Metals, uh, this is in Australia, this is in Spain, EMED you know here, Avanco in Brazil. So it doesn't really matter where you are as a jurisdiction, if you can drive your project, you've got a good project and you can drive it up the development curve, which is what we're doing here in Asia Met, uh, the rewards will come and very, very significant multiples of what you know, where we're at today. So why, why invest in the company? Uh, just pulling that together. So quality assets and people, track record of doing it before, got, got a very, very good um, asset suite. Uh, the value, so, you know, we're at a low, uh, very much, very close to a low. If we're not at a low, we're, we're not far away from it in terms of the metals and mining uh, and commodity space. Uh, the company's, you know, on any metric, 
uh, in, a, in a standard in a market, we're trading at a very deep discount. I mean, probably traditionally, you'd trade at about two cents a pound of copper in the ground at this stage of our life, currently trading at about 0 0.002 cents a pound in the ground. So it's, you know, that's just where we are in the market. Um, I think, you know, this here, there's been $80 million spent on these projects, more than $80 million, and the market cap's £8 million. Pounds. So you couldn't replace the drilling, you couldn't replace the study work uh, for the current market cap of the company. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just uh, ridiculous, and that's where we are uh, in, the, in, the current, in the current time. So timing, you know, I think the timing's, it's, it's a perfect time to, you know, for those reasons, it's the right time to invest. Um, you know, the outlook for copper's good, in the time frames that Asia Met's looking to develop. There's a very, very, good, very nice match there. The company's got the team to deliver. Uh, we've got a very strong news flow coming forward. Um, the PEA, as I said, the economic analysis is a very important milestone, uh, and we'll, we'll take that forward. And you know, there's, we, as the company sort of progresses through those milestones, as I've shown by the curve, you know, we expect to you know, have a very strong re-rating, uh, and you know, hopefully, the rewards for shareholders will come through through that work uh, over time. That's it. Thank you. And we've got a bit of time for questions. Um, but if you do have any questions, please raise your hand and wait for Peter or Chris to come over the microphone. Peter, at the front here, please. If you speak right into it so it comes through. Do you have a good working relationship with the local uh, government and area? Because uh, one of our presenters tonight has had minor problems in Indonesia. Yep. Um, so I think that's quite an important factor. Yeah, sure. No, no, so, as I said, uh, I've been in Indonesia for 20 years myself. Steve's been 20 years uh, with Freeport and with ourselves. Um, you know, we're, I would say we're part of the fabric of working in Indonesia. So very good relationships at all levels of government, um, central government, provincial government, local communities. It's an area that we're very familiar with and understand well. So having developed projects in other developing countries with quite similar in many ways, understand that a very strong top-down, bottom-up approach is required. We have all those sort of key relationships in place. We do everything by the letter of the law, meet all our obligations to the letter of the law, and you know, I think we're you know, well-placed. I mean, one of the other projects which I alluded to earlier there is Matabi Gold Project in uh, <coughs> North Sumatra. So the team, <coughs> part, the, the team that is in, sits behind Asia Met has been involved in the development of that asset. It's the same group of people. That's been developed very successfully. It's been operating. It's a 95% foreign owned, 5% provincial uh, local government owned. Been operating very successfully for the last three years as a 95% foreign-owned company, and just now has been acquired by um, a private equity group uh, with some of the larger Indonesian families involved. So I think we're well-placed. You know, we're, I think, very cognizant of what you're talking about. Indonesia, as I say to people quite often, there's a lot of day-to-day, month-to-month noise, but it has a very good long-term track record, 60 years of foreign investment, most of the major companies operating there quite successfully um, and, you know, we're quite comfortable that we can deliver with that track record. Yeah. Um, question over here, please. Hi there, thanks for the presentation. Just a quick question on the key factors which could um, prevent uh, the core projects that you mentioned coming to fruition. What could prevent? Look, the, I think from, from my perspective, the, from a technical perspective, the key, the key is the metallurgical test work program, which is currently underway. There's nothing to suggest that there's any issues. We've got one of the best or top three consultants in Heat Leach SXCW working there, designed the program, running the program, interpreting the results. So, you know, we've got that covered with, you know, very good consultants. And uh, I think, you know, that's, that's the key technical side. In terms of delivery, Beyond that, um, the country risk issues I'm very comfortable with. I don't have any problems there. The, the key 
funding risk is always, in a market like this, funding risk is, is always one of the key things. But, you know, I hope you've picked up that I'm sort of thinking ahead on that and I'm looking at ways that understanding of the equity value is very, very expensive right now and I want to minimise, wherever possible, the use of equity going forward. So we'll look to uh, project level strategic uh, partnerships, we'll look to divestment of assets, we'll look to a number of things to get us through the lower part of the curve to get a much higher equity valuation if we need to raise any equity going forward, which we, you know, we will, but it'll, it's, it'll be project finance at the point where we're looking to put it into development and I think it'll be a very different proposition at that time. Thank you. And um, Tony, are you and your team sticking around for a drink after the presentation? We'll be here. We'll be here at the the back end. I might have to duck away for a short time, but I'll be back at. Okay. At the so end. I'm quite keen to stick to time. We've just run out of time for, sure. you for right yep. now. No and worries. so, Tony, thank you very much yep. indeed. Thank you. Thank you.